The next learning objective is explain the pathophysiology and clinical presentation of pneumocystis pneumonia, toxoplasma, gondii encephalitis, and mycobacterium avium complex disease. Pneumocystis pneumonia or PCP is actually caused by uh, pneumocystis uh, gerovechiae, which is actually a fungus species. So PCP, uh, which some people call PJP because of this change in nomenclature. So it used to be, uh, you know, PCP, the C used to stand for uh, carinii, uh, but because it was, uh, you know, the taxonomy was changed, uh, you may see the abbreviation PJP. But in general, the, uh, the um, DHHH guidelines still refer to it as PCP. Now, because this is uh, ubiquitous, it is uh, thought that we all get exposed to uh, this organism as a, ch um, you know, during our childhood and if immunosuppressed the patient, it basically gets reactivated and in HIV specifically, it can lead to the infection of the lungs and pneumonia. And 90% of PCP cases occur, occur when the CD4 cell count is less than 200. So this is an important cutoff to remember, CD4, uh, you know, less than 200. Also, patients who do not have HIV, but they are on prolonged use of systemic corticosteroid. So typically, at least uh, 20 um, equivalent milligram of prednisone for at least four weeks. These patients will also be at risk of PCP because corticosteroids can also reduce uh, the CD4 count. Now, transmission is person to person. So uh, obviously, uh, healthy people can be colonized with this. It just doesn't cause an infection in an intact uh, immune uh, system. Uh, but immunodeficient people uh, will actually develop the pneumonia. Now, when it comes to the host defenses, uh, there is innate immunity, so alveolar uh, macrophages as well as surfactant proteins uh, protect uh, individuals from uh, this organism, as well as humoral immunity. So T cells, B cells, and immunoglobulins from the B cells are involved, uh, which explains why patients with compromised T cell are at increased risk of getting uh, PCP. So the clinical manifestations include exertional dyspnea as well as fever, non-productive cough, and chest discomfort, uh, which worsens within days to weeks. Now, this is a progressive disease, so the um, prodromal period uh, can uh, extend from three to eight weeks. So in general, for any infection, uh, the initial um, phase is the incubation period, uh, followed by a uh, prodromal uh, period where you have mild signs and symptoms, and then you have a period of illness followed by a period of decline, as well as uh, a period of convalescence. So in PCP, in HIV patients, uh, this uh, prodromal uh, period could be uh, very extended, three to eight weeks, so it's uh, very progressive. So for definitive diagnosis of PCP, histopathologic or cytopathologic demonstration of the organism is in either tissue, BAL fluid, or induced sputum sample is required. If you have chest radiograph, so technically, uh, uh, basically chest x-ray, you will see uh, symmetrical ground glass uh, infiltrates. Uh, on chest uh, CT, you will also see the same. Uh, the Benefit of chest CT is that even if the chest x-ray is normal, you can still see the ground gl uh, glass appearance on the chest CT. Uh, PCR uh, is an alternative method. Um, it's alternative because it's expensive and it's also cannot distinguish between colonization and infection. And there's also the big glucan test, uh, which is highly sensitive but low uh, specificity. So. If it's positive, it doesn't necessarily mean PCP. It could be any, any fungal infection. But if it is negative, then you can rule out uh, PCP. Uh, and lastly, one uh, observation is that lactate dehydrogenase typically happens to be greater than 500 um, in patients with PCP, but that's non-specific. So, you know, this is not really for diagnosis. It's 
Uh, it just gives you a clue if you see a high lactate dehydrogenase. Let's change uh, gear to toxoplasma gondii. So toxoplasmic encephalitis or TE is caused by toxoplasma gondii. Uh, it is a protozoan parasite. So you can see that uh, in the life cycle of this parasite, cats are involved as well as uh, livestock. Um, so, you know, the risk factors um, for getting this would be basically undercooked meat as well as raw shellfish. So oyster, uh, clams, etc. As well as, um, you know, if you have uh, exposed uh, vegetables, so untreated water or, um, you know, organic food um, or if you're growing your own food and cats are or li even livestock are around these uh, that could expose uh, the patient to toxoplasma gondii now this is opportunistic infection so people with an uh, uh, intact host um, immunity don't have to worry about this but this is for uh, people with uh, cd4 count uh, less than uh, 200 that are at risk so clinical manifestations they include uh, focal encephalitis with headache, confusion, or uh, motor weakness and fever. Uh, for diagnosis, it is important for all patients with TE to uh, be tested for toxoplasma IgG because they will be seropositive. So toxoplasma IgG will be positive. So if the IgG is negative, it's very unlikely that someone has toxoplasmosis. Now, definitive diagnosis requires three criteria. So a compatible clinical syndrome. So, uh, you know, the symptoms have to be there. And then an identification of one or more mass lesions by CT or MRI of the brain, as well as detection of the organism in a clinical sample um, typically uh, brain biopsy. And this is really reserved as a last uh, resort. In other words, instead of doing brain biopsy, if someone has uh, toxoplasma IgG, you know, you go ahead and treat them. It's really not necessary to go into brain biopsy. And lastly, Mycobacterium uh, avium complex or MAC. Um, you know, there are multiple species of Mycobacterium. Uh, so not Mac Mycobacterium tuberculosis, but we'll talk about that uh, on another day. Uh, but these are more of a slow growing uh, non tuberculous uh, mycobacteria, which several of them that are common um, in these patients are grouped together and called a complex. So, because avium is the most common one, gets the name. So, Mycobacterium avium complex uh, is a group of multiple uh, mycobacteria. Uh, regardless, uh, these are opportunistic infections that typically occur in people with HIV with CD4 of less than 50. So this one, you really have to deplete the CD cell, CD4 cell counts in order to be exposed to this. Uh, we will discuss more about uh, mycobacteria in general when we talk about uh, tuberculosis on, a, uh, on another topic. Symptoms include fever, night sweats, weight loss, fatigue, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. So you will see that these symptoms are also common in tuberculosis, night sweats, uh, weight loss, um, as well as anemia and elevated uh, liver alkaline uh, alphas. For diagnosis, a confirmed diagnosis is based on compatible clinical signs and symptoms, as well as isolation of MAC from culture of blood, lymph node, bone marrow or other normally sterile tissue or body fluids.